Sorcha. My name is Anne Marie and I love to make things with joy. If you like to make things with joy or just want to experience things made with joy, you have found the right place. Please like, subscribe, and share. And turn on the notification bell so that you can find out whenever I release new content. Well, first of all, we are over the hump in my hashtag so reversible 2024 challenge i hope you are working on a little project for fun with joy um and that you're going to share with the rest of us the things that you make so this is my anatomy of the sew for the fiber moods eden bomber jacket let me give you a little history first I'm not exactly sure when I became obsessed with bomber jackets, but I started to think about it because I have so many bomber jackets, so many bomber jacket patterns, and I was like, well, what's your deal? Like, I don't particularly remember you wearing a bunch of them when you were younger. And I remembered in high school, I went to Brooklyn Technical High School when I was a young whippersnapper in New York. And they had my favorite color, navy and white, beautiful senior jackets with the um, uh, flexible um, webbing at the bottom, also known as ribbing, <laughs> and the big tech on the back. And I wanted one so badly. Now, you're supposed to on your senior on your um, jacket put your letters for sports or academics and stuff like that. But I didn't care about any of that. I just wanted a blue and white jacket. They look so cool on everyone else who was wearing them. But I am first generation immigrant and so were my parents and they had no interest whatsoever in me having a letter jacket <laughs> for whatever price. They didn't get it. Of course they didn't get it, it's not their culture. So of course I made sure two out of the three of my kids had one, which they promptly proceeded the minute they graduated from high school, get rid of. They're like, not interested. <laughs> but that's my fan uh, fantasy, not theirs. Anyway, I digress. So I've always loved a bomber jacket. So I have found different bomber jackets in different iterations. So when I got this fiber mood, I think it was reviewed by uh, the cutting line. And I thought, oh, I think I'm gonna get that issue of Fiber mood. Now, also, when I was a young girl in uh, Brooklyn, New York, I used to love a magazine. I used to go to magazine stands, and I, I love to read, and I loved magazines in particular. I'd spend my allowance on magazines, and they would have like Berta books or something where the pattern was inside uh, the magazine. I love that. I love tracing the pattern. I know some people find it tedious, but I love it. All the patterns for everything that's in the book is shown, is inside of the magazine. Y'all, I, I have destroyed fabric from a very young age. I think from 11, I used to buy fabric and stuff um, and my mom would despair for me and she would, um, I remember Marie Osmond patterns. Was it by McCall's or Simplicity? I'm not sure. Anyway, she would despair that I was destroying all this fabric that I was uh, purchasing with my allowance. And she would take it to work. She was a, a nurse and there would be always someone who sewed. So they get it done and bring it back. That was not the point of the exercise. I needed to destroy the fabric. I needed to purchase the wrong fabric, too little, too much break the needles. It's all her fault. We bought a Singer machine when I was at uh, 11 and they gave lessons. If they didn't want me to use the machine, they shouldn't have bought it, right? So I digress. So anyway, so I love these kind of magazines, but I don't buy a lot because I have quite a few of them. And in my effort, to use things that I do not see, why I participated in the hashtag 24 and 2024, and I got so many PDFs done by focusing on patterns that I didn't put my hands on, but were actually inside of books or inside of my computer and just needed to be printed out, put together, and put together with some fabrics. So I was enamored of the Eden bomber that was on the front cover. I wanted to make it bad, okay? And here's a copy of it in denim, all right? 
I thought it would be just right for Jamaica because it doesn't come all the way down there. They're not, there's no ribbing on the cuffs. It's a balloon um, ja uh, jacket. And then along came, it was time for my sew reversible challenge. And I thought, hmm, I'd like to do that. So let me see. I think I figured out that this pattern, need, pattern needed two and a quarter uh, yards of fabric. Um, they put out the requirements in, I think meters or not meters or centimeters, something where I had to do the conversion, you know, which I thought, well, that's good for me. Use my brain and let me find it for okay, you. Okay, so for my size, which I, uh, determined by bus size was extra large, it was 240 centimeters, which I think was like two and something yards. You can do the conversion on your phone or computer or something like that. It doesn't have to really knock you out. So anyway, I had quite a bit, a little, well, some of this Ankara fabric, which you may have seen in my skirt pattern. Um, anatomy that I did. Um, I am going to do the sew along. Somebody requested it and I will do the sew along um, because I love that skirt. Anyway, so I, first things first, disclosure, you are going to have to trace the lines on this pattern that they provide. So for instance, say they provide this sheet with all of these different lines and they'll give you a guide over here to say what color your line is and what size and you lay your tracing paper over it and you trace it and that's how you get your pattern pieces well the eden it's not too many pieces you don't have to despair all right it's not too many pieces i used my um tracing paper and um did that now <laughs> full disclosure <laughs> something i found out the drawing lines are not the cutting lines you do have to add seam allowance allowances which is wonderful because if you're the type who doesn't like a full five eighths you maybe want a three eighths or maybe you just want a one eighth depending upon the size of your presser foot it's up to you but you should know that those are the tracing lines on the pattern in this fiber mood magazine not the cutting lines luckily for me <laughs> <laughs> um, my I had chosen a pattern size that was just a little bit bigger, and so I was able to stitch uh, um, on the to the edge of my presser foot, and it turned out fitting perfectly. <laughs> Reading teachers should read instructions. <laughs> All right, so after tracing out my bomber jacket, I traced out a few other things on us, you know, on a Sunday watching, uh, um, you know, watching movies and listening to music, talking to people and stuff like that. So I made it so that it was stress-free. I knew one day I'd make the bomber jacket. I just, it just so happened that when it was time for me to do it, I had the pattern already traced. All right, so then I laid the pattern pieces out cut them mindful of the direction and everything. Very simple construction, really. First of all, it is just the front is stitched to the back, which was cut on the fold, all righty. And then the sleeves were constructed. Now I constructed mine differently. I constructed my sleeves because the sleeves are pleated on the inside, they're pleated. I made this a little looser, but on this blue and white version that I made, the sleeve is, is somewhat smaller, but it gives a nice poof either which way you go. Alrighty, so I did the pleating on my sleeve, turned one right side out, one inside out, and stitched along the edge of the sleeve. And I made my sleeves ahead of time. That's not necessarily the order in which they want you to make them. But I like to do that pleating. And so that way, because I have, <laughs> when you're doing reversible garments, sometimes you cannot turn something out if you do not pay attention to how you construct it. So I did the sleeves first. Then I joined them into the body of the um, jacket. 
fairly simple. All right, so for me, because I'm not using the facings, because I'm reversing it, I did not, I didn't do the um, facings and the linings, which you would normally do. I love that about a lined um, jacket. Okay, so I stitched them together at the um, each individual jacket at the, sa at the same time, and then I inserted my ribbing, leaving the neck edge open because I was gonna have to turn it inside out. So I installed my ribbing along the edge, all right? And it was still open on the inside. Then I put my zipper in while the neckline was still open, while it was open. I put in the zipper, okay? I think you're starting to see how simple this could be. And then when I was done, the only thing that was left to close was the back neck, neck edge, which I had left open for the entire construction so that I could turn it inside out. This does not follow the construction information that's in Fiber Mood because I'm making a reversible garment, so it's a little different, okay? All right, also, if you want me to make, do a, to, um, a sew along for this garment, please put it in my comments. Um, I love when people give me ideas to do things. I got the um, request to do the skirt. I'm gonna do the skirt. And so, so this was, um, uh, this Ankara I got from Timu, okay? All right, I, it says it's 100% cotton. I don't know, we'll see, we'll see. <laughs> and then I got this beautiful fabric from uh, Fabric Mart Fabrics to do the inside of here. And I made a wonderful pair of pants to go along with that. I'll show that over here. All right, because I'm going on retreat in September and I thought it would be nice to have a few new things. I absolutely love this fabric. It's so cheerful. It's so um, powerful. All right, so after I made that, uh, floor, um, that firework looking fabric, I remembered that I had a blue, I had some white denim and I really wanted a white denim, denim skirt. I hope I'm pointing to it right here. So I remade that, I remade um, the skirt. I think it's 8149, McCall's 8149. It is still in the pattern catalog. I would pick it up if I were you. It does the skirt that comes in a knee length, below knee length and a, and a maxi. Alrighty, so I did make a white skirt and then I had this beautiful Ankara that my friend Linda bought for me in Georgia. And um, I was a little daunted by all this pattern, but it really worked out. Y'all, you're gonna see it again because I cut it out in a dress. <laughs> Yeah, this is it. The jacket, the skirt, I, I did the dress. So get ready, you're gonna see it again. Alrighty, so I put this blue and white. It kind of reminded me of holiday, like in Greece, kind of like the Greece flag. I, I just absolutely love it. I love the fit of the skirt. I think the other skirt I made, I may have dropped a little bit of weight. So I'm gonna hold off until it's falling off. Then what's great about this pattern is you're just going to, if, if you have, you know, lost weight or gained weight, you would just cut along the very edge and add fabric or take, or, or, um, take away fabric and then reinsert the zipper. But this, this fit is perfect. This fit is perfect. So the um, toile I have made of this is perfect. But I digress, we were talking about the jacket. So, now, I loved how this came out because I like to get white dirty. So I figure I'm gonna drop something substantial on the white jacket and need to revert to wearing the blue and white all the time. But it was constructed the same way, only I followed the instructions for the sleeves. 
So these pleats are exactly how they should be. Not, um, not what I did with the floral one. I made the pleats a little, I let them open a little bit so it would bell more. So, but I'm really, I'm really tickled with how it came out. Okay. I got this, um, I got these ribbing from Mood Fabrics. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty pleased with the match for the blue. I don't think it was too um, too bad. And this is a zipper that um, uh, a zipper that I got from either Timu or Joanne Fabrics. But what's important about that zipper is it toggles both ways. So it just doesn't matter which side you sew in place, you can open the zip up from either side. So those are the kind of things that are um, important when you're making reversible garments. All right, as you can tell, I've been having a very good time. Next week is the last week. I do have one uh, uh, last garment fresh. I'll try and put some of the ones I've made in the past in here. Plus, also, if you want to see some recent reversible garments I made, I made an entire wardrobe for my daughter, Sarah, who um, works in the United States. And so I will put that somewhere around here, a link so that you can um, see the things I made for her. Um, yeah, we do a lot of reversing around here, but we'll go back to normal because next month is Dress a Girl. Unless I need to make another reversible Dress a Girl dress. I made one last year. Here's the link over here. <laughs> Alrighty. I hope you're having a good time. I have seen some things that people have made. Um, it's been, it's going to be fun, y'all. And I will show you some of my, uh, before we're done, I'll show you some of my gold bags of danger um, in my prize things. Now, remember, my prizes are not um, subjective. They're random draw. All right. So don't, don't think someone's going to judge you and say, oh, I don't think that's good. I think any creative process is good. All right. Okay. Take care and we'll see you real soon.